What is up everybody, it is Og here, back with another video, and today we're going to be looking at part 2 of the ZF Comprehensive Guide. Now, if you guys haven't watched part 1 already, I'm going to link that up above, make sure to go watch that, and that teaches you guys pretty much what I do for my pool methods. And so that's the one pool strategy where I take you guys through the entire instance, show you my exact pools that I do, and my different run strategy that I've come up with in order to make sure that I get down as many mobs as fast as possible. But in part two, we're going to go through some extra tips and tricks that I've learned along the way, because ZF has been such an integral part of WoW Classic, including where the safe spots are, how to pull a scarab room appropriately, why you would want to pull a scarab room appropriately, and then some extra ways to make sure that you stay alive, and also how to get your alts some XP a lot easier. And then we're going to round it out with a two pull strategy for people who don't have their epic mount yet, just to make sure that they can get as much XP or gold as possible. All right, so let's get started. All right, so the very first thing I want to go through as far as tips goes is the safe spots. ZF is notorious for having a ton of safe spots, and it is important to know all the safe spots so that if anything goes awry during your run, you have a place to go hide so you don't die and don't have to run back. So these are the safe spots that I know that I use on a consistent basis. If there's any more, definitely let me know in the comments below. So here I'm going to aggro some two or some mobs just to show that I have aggro on them and we can see them reset. So I come up behind these two boxes. Now I found that it works best when you run around the top left side of the box and when you stay in the middle, sometimes they won't reset perfectly. So just shimmy around a little and then eventually they'll reset. Now the second safe spot that we're going to run to is going to be in Thika's room, I think is how you pronounce it but it's basically the mob with all the scarabs. And so this is really good spot because let's say that your mage is really far ahead of everybody else and they've taken some damage, but they definitely don't want to die. What they can do is they can run right behind here and jump up into this urn. And what that does is reset. So that way they don't have to run all the way down the last hallway if they're close to dying or something like that. It's a great reset spot when you're going through. Now these last two you just saw in the video, but or sorry, actually, there's one additional, which is this urn up here on the left. So this was one of the most, or on the right, sorry, this is one of the most popular spots when this first came out, and when the mages were doing, you know, three mage pools and things like that to level up right when classic was starting, is to jump from this grave right here, up onto this mantle. Sometimes if the mobs are all the way in the room, you're going to get some shooting at you, just kind of jump up and down on top of that mantle, and eventually you'll get them to reset. The next spot is up here on this walkway, and this entire side pillar system over here is a safe spot. So you can run anywhere alongside this and it acts as a safe spot. And then the last one is my favorite for running my mage too, which is the far left urn, because all you have to do is just run them straight into it. Don't even need to jump or anything like that. The only downside is that you can't see because your vision's blocked by this urn, but they will reset there. So that's the best place in my opinion to stop when you were doing your runs. So now we're in the scarab room. This is tip number two. So the scarab room obviously has the use of getting some extra XP for your alts or getting some extra gold. If you're clearing through the dungeon really quick and you just wanna burn that extra time instead of sitting there doing nothing for the resets, just killing out the scarab room. It has a lot of good items that you can go and vendor for some decent silver, probably like a gold or one, I would say, but it has some extra hidden benefits. The first hidden benefit is that it allows for extra space to be able to do the one pool easier, the two pool easier, and just aggro mobs. Now, you don't want to have the scarabs alive when you're doing this because you could potentially aggro the scarabs and they aggro off of each other, as we'll show in a second. So you definitely don't want to have them up because it could cause issues. But this opens you up to a whole entire another large room to be able to kite around the mobs, as we'll show in a little bit. First thing you do when you go over to the scarab room is you have to take out the boss because you don't want the boss patting around while you're trying to do AOE farming or kill the mobs or anything like that because he could just cause issues and has more health than regular mobs. Second thing is to take out the scarabs. So let's see how to do that. As we mentioned, the scarabs aggro off of each other. And so what I choose to do is aggro some of the far scarabs and let them do the work for me. So here I frostbolt some of the far scarabs. I'm gonna fire blast another scarab. I'm gonna counter spell a scarab and I'm gonna arcane some scarabs. Basically you're aggroing up a bunch of the scarabs without getting hit. As soon as you're about to get hit, you blink away and you blink to the other far side and just pick up the rest of the scarabs. Now, since they aggro off each other, they all aggro and now you're just in a block and you can just simply kill them. So you can use a block because you're not going to be need a block for the actual kill itself. So you might as well use one here. If you want, you can also flame strike Kona cold. That's what I typically do, but I just did blizzard just because it's what popped into my head at the time, honestly. But I, it's funny enough, I did mess up that blizzard there as I took one step and then the terrain actually shifted my focus. And so I didn't get the blizzard on the mobs. But anyways, we get them down and now 
One thing is that standing your rogue right here, you don't actually get XP. But tip number three is gonna be showing you how to get XP off of these exact mobs in this location and off the entire pool in this location. Okay, so there's actually a place that you can stand on your alts so they don't need to run all the way to the end of the dungeon. So if you're having trouble getting them there, if they're dying early, or if you just don't wanna deal with dual boxing, running them to the end, this is for you guys to, so that you can not have to do that. So I have a fully open grave pool and everything like that. I have the scarabs dead so I can show you guys this. But basically, if you run your rogue to that first safe spot that we showed you guys a couple minutes ago, they can get experience as long as you kill in a certain half of the scarab room, which is the left side because it's the closer half. And so I'm going to show you guys that now. So Rogue's here. He's just chilling out. You can see the XP. The last XP I got was from some shadow casters or something like that. We're going to mount up and we're going to do our normal pull just like before. And so again, we're going to run around the outside of these mobs. I take a little bit more damage this time just because I paused there and just because of the amount of mobs that are there. But we use those mobs to pull the rest of the mobs, run around the outside. They aggro themselves and we make sure that we get to the end safe and sound. Now we did lose more than normal, but we still even have over half of our life and we're good to go. Now, one thing I did want to give you another tip for when you're running around, the best way to kind of coalesce all these mobs together into one is to make short little stops. Because what happens is that by doing the stop, they're all recalculating the direction that they want to run to you. So if you're running in a circle, they're just going to keep on running in a circle. But if you stop halfway through that circle, the second that you do, they all recalculate and they take a diagonal point. So you can see here that they're all running in a circle. I'm going to stop. And then they all kind of adjust and just start running towards me. And what that does is it allows them to group up really easily so that I only need to take one lap around. But take as many laps around as you need to get all these mobs grouped up. Now, this is not a clean pool. Definitely do the pool a lot better than this. But I know with them and I go to start Blizzard, I have one mob on me. I don't need to worry about that. A lot of people, what they'll do is they'll Cold Snap and Frost Nova again, which is another option if you have a mob resist, just to keep them all grouped. I don't really worry about that because it's just one mob. So taking that damage, I blink away, and now I am going to go for a Flame Strike Cone of Cold. One quick thing to mention, though, is that in the Scarab Room, there are these pats that walk by up here. You don't really need to worry about them, though, because as long as you're not in this like bottom little 1 20th of the room, you're not going to aggro them. But it is possible to aggro them, so definitely just be mindful of where they are or kill them if you want to be safe. I don't really worry about them, though, because even them getting that close to the group, they don't aggro. So here I just go for the normal group kill. Now this is really sloppy, and so I decide to Cold Snap and Nova, and definitely don't use this as an example of how to do the clears because it's sloppy, but they die at the end of the day, and that's all that really matters. So we're going to Flame Strike, go to Cold, kill the rest of them. I'm going to have to evocate here because I just ran over that block and got hit, and I'm pretty much oom. So I'm just going to evocate real quick and take out these last mobs. But then what we can do is we can look over at the rogue and we can see he has gotten all of this experience. So because we killed all of the mobs in this half of the room, that rogue standing at the first safe spot, the one where you can easily run to, very, very easily run to and just chill out at, got all of that experience. So that's an amazing trick for you guys if you don't wanna to have to go all the way to the end of the instance, if you're having trouble with that, just park the tunes right at that first safe spot and they will be able to get all of the experience. You're just gonna have to clear the scarab room, which is gonna take you an extra couple of minutes, but honestly, if you find that your group is dying a lot to that run, it is much better than to wait and have to run back and guide them all through again and everything like that. So highly recommend this if you're having trouble with your groups getting to the end spot. All right, so now we're gonna talk about the last trick, and that is a two pool strategy. So obviously not everyone's gonna have an epic mount, and you could potentially do one, pool strategy without an epic mount. I might have a video coming out about that at some point, but I highly recommend just sticking with the two pools because it's much safer. And you're really not going to lose that much time because you still have that five runs per hour lockout. But not everyone's going to have their epic mount. A lot of people are going to be using this method to try to grind up to that epic mount. So I wanted to include a two pool strategy so that you guys would know what to do. So here we have a fully fresh instance with all the graves, and I'm going to show you guys the two pool strategy. Similar to before, we're gonna open up these first graves the exact same way as we did. And you'll notice that we didn't activate the Witch Doctor. 
Now, there's a reason for that, and we're going to talk about that in a second. But with this, you do not want to activate the Witch Doctor if you want to do it in two pools. If you want to do it in three, go ahead, activate the Witch Doctor. But two pool strategy, do not activate the Witch Doctor. You'll see that I actually take a good amount of damage there, but at the end of the day, that's all right. But what you did notice, hopefully, is that I actually stopped at this grave. So similar to what I said before, if you find that you have a little bit more damage coming your way, if more of the zombies are spawning from the second half of graves, perfectly fine. Stop whenever you need to. Don't die. Whatever you do, don't die. So play it safe, guys. All right, so we bandage up. We get ready. They're going to reset. We're going to aggro the rest of these graves over here and be ready for the first pool of our two pool strategy. So let's get my mana back. You want to make sure that whenever you're going to do these pools, you have full mana and full health, or at least full health and pretty close to full mana. Reason being, your first line of defense after your ice barrier is going to be the mana shield, and that's just going to drain your mana. So you might as well have full health, full mana, just to be safe and make sure that you don't die. So come over here, aggro up these last graves over here, and then I'm going to aggro this last one as well, and then we're good to go. So now we've activated all these mobs. So they haven't reset, and we're not going to use them out. So how are we going to do this? We're going to, similar to before, use them to kill each other. Now you'll see this shadow hunter. Again, I'm not going to worry about this just because I'm used to this pool, right? But feel free to kill it. Kill it if it's in your way. I don't need to pull it right now because at the end of the day, it's going to run right back through there while I'm getting mana. So I'm just going to let it do its normal path, get back out there, and then go and kill the rest of the mobs. But if you have people with you, go ahead and kill it. Get some extra XP. What you do, however, with the two pool is that you use the mobs to pull themselves. So by frost bolting, the corner mobs and aggroing all the mobs in the groups, we're gonna pull them all. So we frost bolt that mob, frost bolt this mob, and frost bolt that mob. And then we'll frost bolt this last mob over there. We'll fire blast that guy, counter spell the mob over to the left, and then blink away. And what you'll notice is that every single mob pretty much has been aggroed from that run, or from the first round of graves. So you come out, you Nova. What I recommend, I messed up a little bit there, guys, I'm gonna be honest, is I recommend when you come out of this block, try to run over here. I was actually trying to run over here, but the pathing got weird. Run away from the circle because when you run towards the circle or you try to go through them or stuff like that, you're just going to get hit extra. But if you run away from the semicircle, then the mobs aren't going to be able to hit you from as far. Leeway will not be activated because they're going to be nova and you'll be able to get out with a lot less damage. I still don't take much damage here because I only got hit by these top mobs, but had I run through the mobs, I would have taken a lot more damage and probably even died. So I'm going to come over here and I'm just going to go through the normal strategy. So I get pretty much max distance. I start blizzarding and all the mobs start coming and it's real easy and real clean to kill. And that only uses one block. So if you still want to kill that front mob or the front group of mobs before you run over here, go ahead. And you can still just have that one block from cold snap and do all of this as well. Most strategies that I have seen before, use three pool strategy or potentially two pool strategy, but use all the blocks with those strategies. This only requires one. So I highly recommend you guys doing this strategy. Similar to before, I'm going to cut around with Kona Cold. Now I am pretty low on mana, so I'm going to have to Nova and Evocate. So it wasn't as clean just because I had to use Blink and other things like that and extra uh, Frost Bolts and whatnot to get a little bit of mana. But we get the mobs down without a problem. And this is an awesome alternative for people looking for a two pool strategy if they don't have their epic mount. So I'm just gonna skip ahead to when we close out these final mobs. I'm basically just running around and I'm eventually going to, actually I'll let it play. I'm eventually going to Nova them. I'm gonna get evocate because I need to and then just Kona Gold, but they all die. But now at least you guys know that I didn't die and then clip it again. So after we do this, we loot up the mobs and then we get ready for the next pool. And so with this next pool, Similar to before, we're going to aggro them the same way, but we're now actually going to activate the Witch Doctor. Now, here's the reason why. We were able to do this pool because we reset and we blocked, right? So we aggroed up all the mobs, we were taking damage, we reset, they ran back to their position. Aggroed up all the mobs, ran back to our reset, they ran back to their position. Here, however, we can do that again, but since it's not as many mobs, we actually don't need block to kill them. So it's actually faster to go ahead and open up the Witch Doctor's chest. Now what this does is it activates the Witch Doctor, which is the boss. You don't have to kill them though. 
And now when we go to open up these graves, all these mobs are going to run right to the Witch Doctor. So make sure you have full health, full mana, Ice Barrier up, and you open up all these graves. And then I like to blink over here and just kind of let them all come towards you and try to kite them a little bit if you need to. And Nova, you'll see I have 100% health. I still have my Ice Barrier. And now we have all the mobs from that pool. We didn't need to block and we're able to get back into our normal kill without any problem at all. And we have a ton of mana to do so. So by activating the Witch Doctor, we saved ourselves time by resetting. We didn't need to reset again. Now back up and aggro them again. And we also didn't take unnecessary damage by needing to do so either. And we didn't need to use an ice block. So this is a great strategy to pull that last group. Just make sure you activate the Witch Doctor in between the first two pull and this last group. At the end of the day, guys, the entire reset is going to be 60 minutes to do five dungeons. So as long as you can do it in 12 minutes, use whichever method works for you. If you want to use a Scarab Room, use a Scarab Room. If you want to use this pool, use this pool. If you want to have your mobs or have your friends hang out in the back, if you don't want to bring them at all, just mess around with it. These are some of the best strategies that I've learned over time to basically make these pools as efficient as possible and get the maximum XP and the maximum gold. So tailor it towards whatever works for you. But I hope that this guide helped you out and learned some extra tips and tricks and get down your perfect strategy. All right, everyone, that wraps up today's video. I hope you all enjoyed it. And if you did, please subscribe and leave a like and a comment below to let me know so. And if you guys have any other ideas for any other videos, please let me know in the comments below. Also check out the description for the Twitch where I do all this live. And also for my Twitter and Discord where you guys can be notified of any future updates and when I'm gonna go live on stream. So I'll see you guys in the next video.